Let me preface this video by saying I am a beta tester. They sent me this machine for free for feedback, which they are going to change in the production unit. Also, your unit may look different as this is a beta unit and production may have some slight differences. Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop and today we're gonna do a quick look at the new Onefinity rolling folding stand. This thing is pretty awesome and if you have a small shop like I had, I just moved to the big one, but you have a small shop like I had, this is gonna change your CNC game completely because you're gonna save a ton of space. As you saw at the beginning of this video, I rolled it in to place right here. It's not light. The woodworker is pretty heavy. That's 150 pounds in itself, plus this metal base. It is all aluminum, so it's, it's light for metal, but it's still very heavy. Um, you're gonna be able to roll it in a, into its place and then put it wherever you want it. And then once you're finished, you can just roll it out of the way, which is pretty amazing for a pretty big CNC. So everything is built off the quick change wasteboard. You need to have that to be able to use anything else with the, the stand and rolling stand part of it. So that quick change wasteboard is built out of all aluminum. It's got the big tubing here. It has integrated T-Track, and then you cut and provide your own MDF strips. This is really easy. You just buy some MDF and cut it to size that fits behind. They have a uh, over attachment design. And then what I have in front of me is an under attachment. We come up from below and attach the MDF. I like that in this particular situation, because if I cut down into the MDF, I won't cut down into the attachment bolts or screws that are holding down the MDF. That's very similar to my wasteboard that I came out with the T, uh, T slots coming from below. If you wanted to, you can add the, uh, screw in T slot you know, like attachments. So you could put those anywhere you wanted. The controller mounts really nicely underneath. There's four holes that you just attach this controller with some provided screws. And you have access to the e-stop if you need it and the on and off from the front. The screen still mounts the exact same way on the arm. As far as this side, what we have, it looks like a handle and it could be used to pick it up like this, but it's actually a foot. You're gonna lean the table down on this foot so it holds it upright. If you do it the other way around, it's gonna tilt over until it leans on the rail and you don't want that. You want it to lean on this foot. The integrated T-Track works really well with our oops clamps. So we set down the piece of wood we wanna carve and slide in the clamp right into the T-Track. Get that somewhat tight. We do it on the other side. And we go ahead and clamp them down. And the nice thing is you can get both of these from the same company. And now our material is stuck there and we have a nice clean way to cut this material with it holding down. So that's an option with the integrated T-Track. All right, in the front we have a big tube going across the front. We have that mirrored in the back. That's a big hollow aluminum tube. It's pretty stout. It's pretty thick. I would say like 50 millimeters, maybe 45. And then we have uh, bolts going through here that attach the T-Track in between. So it's all pinned together and it holds it together really nicely. Now all four feet get bolted down into each corner with uh, four bolts in each foot. And it's a uh, slotted just like the foot is here. It's, it mounts in the same way that the X mounts to the gantry. So that's how I mounted the foot onto here. So it's solid onto the wasteboard. Now, as for the legs of this, it is on a pivoting piece. So this plate will come off if you wanna change over to the wall hang mount, or if you don't get the wall hang mount or the feet, this plate won't exist. But this plate attaches with a pivot point right here for the legs and I will show you how the legs operate. So if we come in on the leg, we have this piece that pivots down like this and up like this, and there's a spring that's inside, a spring-loaded pin, and this pushes that pin out so it comes out of the leg, and you do it on both sides. I'm gonna grab it by the handle, lift it up just a smidge, and push my foot in, laying it down like this, so it's on the feet part first. And then I'll grab here, 
and it spring clips together with that spring that was in here. You can see the metal washer here. Now we're gonna come over on the other side and I'm just gonna repeat those same steps. I'm gonna twist this up and kind of push it in to push the spring in. Do it on this side. And then I'm going to lift it up like so. I'm gonna slowly lay it down on the foot and now the foot goes in and it clips in like this. The only thing we need to be kind of careful about is our power cords to the router and the controller and the power cord to your screen. You may want to take the screen off while you're doing this because that is just a magnet mount. So you can magnet that later. So how you put the foot out, again, we're going to take that same piece. You're going to pull it out and you can see the metal piece here. We're going to pop that in so it pushes that spring out. Same thing on the other side. Now let's push the spring out and I can lift the foot up like that. And we're going to start putting it down. But I'm going to bring you in so we can see the underneath of this table. So you can see our controller is mounted right here. And our T-Track rails are right here. We have four of them. They're mounted with some uh, wood screws going through, holding these together. And then there's some extra ones on these two rails holding the controller upside down right in here. All right, so I've already gotten this far. So let's go ahead and set it back up. So once I got this leg set the way I want it to, I just grab it here and I lay it down like that. I come on this side and again with those spring loaded clips, we get it unhooked. And this is where if you are not strong enough to lift like a hundred pounds, you're not going to be able to lift this up. This is pretty heavy at this point, but you can lift it up. You grab it with your foot. You heard it snap back into place and it's that quick to set it back up from a folded area. So if you're in a small shop, unlike the shop I'm in now, the shop I was in the 10 by 16, this would have been perfect. You could just have it fold up, fold it up against the wall, tucked away somewhere uh, in your garage next to your car but then you could just grab it out when you want to use it. And if it's a sunny day or a nice day, you could just wheel it outside and we really don't have to worry about dust collection. So what's really nice about this, I just wheel it outside. I can plug it into the side of my shop, my house, run an extension cord, give it a cut, get, once I'm done, I mean, if sawdust blows on the ground, I just grab my leaf blower, bloom, 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 get it all done, and then I'm finished. And when I'm finished, I just wheel it back into the shop. All right, so of course we want to see some carving on it, see how stable it is. Please note that I have cranked up the jerk settings from 1,000 to 5,000 for the machine. So it's actually gonna jerk back and forth a little bit faster than normal that you would get uh, that's gonna speed up my carb. So you're gonna see the stand is gonna get a little bit more motion than normal. So I'm gonna carve a Harry Potter little Aztec calendar. It's like a 12 by 12 with a V-bit and I programmed it so we could see a lot of uh, movement. So here we go. All right, so I started the carve. You can see it moving in real time. You can notice the jerk uh, that the machine is doing. It, remember, it's doing five times the jerk that a normal machine does straight from the factory. I turned that setting up to really give it some movement so you can see the table move. There is movement in the table. That's normal for every table that is out there that is a, a mobile table, at least, that I've seen. Uh, you can check the Armor Toolbench table that I've done a billion carves on that has casters on it, it wobbles back and forth a little bit. Um, and this one does the same, but not in a abnormal way. It's functioning perfectly well and the carve is coming out perfectly fine. So I just wanted you to see the actual movement in the table itself as it's set up as the stand. For a mobile cart, it's working really well. You can also see that any chips and debris 
are not getting into the controller because that's underneath where any of that is coming. So I'm gonna let this finish out and we can take a look at what the carb looks like after it's done. I got about a three hour wait for this carb. It's a Harry Potter Aztec calendar for my son. So let's let it finish up. All right, I just got done eating dinner. The carb just finished, so let's come in and check out what it looks like. I've, all I've done was turn this thing on and run it, showed you the start of it, walked away, ate dinner for several hours, came back and let's take a look. All I'm gonna do is just move it away. And you can see the carb came out really nicely here. Go down in. Hopefully you can see some of the details here and pick it up on the screen. So I have not flattened the waste board and I did not flatten this piece of wood. So any abnormalities there would be of depth. That would be the inconsistencies of the flatness, but I wanted to just go straight raw and you can see what it looks like. So there it is. The 150 cutting on the stand. Again, remember I have a beta machine and the final result of their, the one you'll purchase will be even more robust than this one. I'm told it's probably up to twice as rigid as the one I have, so even more robust. So that is the machine carving a bunch of V-carbs. Again, I had my jerk setting at 5,000 instead of 1,000 that the uh, factory's defaults are. So I'm five times more uh, at acceleration in jerk than normal. So that's cutting on the stand. So as you can see, it's pretty stout. I'm not worried about the stoutness of this thing. It's stout. I'm about 200 pounds. It ain't going nowhere. This is probably gonna sit more in my shop now that I have a 1500 square foot shop, which I'm blessed to have, but not everybody has. Uh, it's gonna sit more as just a clean looking, nice packaged machine. If I was in my other shop, that was a 10 by 16 and then a 16 by 20. This would be up against the corner because I didn't use it a ton, but when I used it, it would have been really nice to be able to tuck it away and gain that space back for other projects I was doing and not actually end up running into this thing. So that is the rolling folding stand by One Thing CNC. I think it's definitely a game changer for your shop if you have a small shop or you don't want to run a dust collection or anything, you just wheel it outside, cut it, wheel it back inside and leave it standing up against the wall. It is a really nice clean looking stand, a whole package if you want something in the shop and you don't have to make a, a, a stand if you don't have any woodworking abilities necessarily to make like a frame. You don't have to worry about that because this is an all in one deal. You just bolt it together and uh, you'll have a whole stand and frame and it's really nice. That's it for this one guys. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, or comments about this thing, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer every single one of them. I'll see you next time. Happy cutting. Table, stay in, what, what is this called? <sighs> what the freak am I saying? <laughs> I don't know what I wanna say, that's the problem. And I'll try to answer so we going. So that is the rolling, what is this? So that's it for this one. 